Um, oh yeah, this is gonna be really great on my resume. <laughs> This isn't the first time broadcast journalism students have called a basketball game, but broadcasting a national tournament is something they're not familiar with. Students began preliminary work days before the tournament started. There were wires being fed, cameras being set up, and lights to adjust. Webcast producer Elaine Indenbosch says she's had a challenging organizational role. There's been lots of scheduling. Tons of like background work, tons of sitting in front of a computer typing things out and then reworking it and reworking it and things like that. Talking to people, kind of delegating jobs, deciding who does what. Above the court sits the director who switches from camera to camera and calls the shots. The VTR operator finds the footage for the replays and there's also a graphics operator who puts graphics on the screen along with names. Beside the control room is where the host of the tournament is located. When the host, Paige Cashmere, isn't on camera, the camera operator flips the camera around and films the score clock, which you can see on the bottom of the screen when the game is on. Broadcast journalism instructor George Gallant says there are challenges with making the transformation from standard definition to high definition equipment. We have all new equipment for this tournament, and so the challenge has been to get a, a whole new set of equipment in high definition when we've been used to working with uh, standard definition to get that all set up so that it can work with the students. It takes a minimum of 11 students to broadcast each game. With only 15 students in the second year broadcast journalism program, many of the students are having to work extra shifts to make it work. For The Bridge, I'm Brandi Tozak. Three to three.